So I'm Laurens Waldorp, and uh, uh, today I wanted to discuss uh, causality in relation with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, which we've been uh, working on. This is uh, work with uh, Yolanda Kosakowski and uh, Han van der Maas from the Department of Psychological Methods. So obsessive compulsive disorder <clears throat> is, uh, is a disorder that is uh, characterized by both thoughts and compulsions. So uh, obsessions uh, like thinking of cleaning, for instance, having things very clean and compulsions uh, refers to the behavior that corresponds to it, repetitive behavior like uh, repetitive cleaning. So normally you may clean uh, the floor for, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes and that would be it but somebody with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder would clean it again and again, and maybe over two or three hours in order to have it clean. And uh, you see a graph here is, is something that we think as a reasonable representation of such uh, disorders. And uh, you see particular relations between these uh, uh, nodes, which represent the variables like control of compulsions, control C, is something that a person thinks of as, am I in control of particular behaviors, compulsions? And this may lead <clears throat> uh, when the person uh, has the idea that there's no uh, control over compulsions, then this may lead to particular distress situations. Uh, of course, these are often ideas, uh, theoretical or sometimes uh, partly empirical. And uh, we would like to know whether these are actually causal relations. Uh, in what way and how um, does control uh, influence distress? Uh, this could also be very different for different uh, people. So the, the relation could be different and uh, um, the way it uh, appears could also be different. So there are many variables like this, uh, and for obsessive compulsive disorder, this is a particular representation. Uh, so some people measure it differently with different kinds of variables. And the variables we have and that are used uh, in this particular research are also uh, scales, so Likert scales on a scale of one to seven, for instance, and how much you agree with particular things. Uh, and these, these uh, make it all quite difficult to work with this in terms of causality in a more strict sense, like uh, when you were uh, doing physics, for instance. But how we tackle this problem, how we see uh, causal relations in this respect is, <clears throat> is the following. Uh, because we often observe a system. So at time zero, for instance, we observe, we, we've done nothing. Uh, we see a patient, for instance, uh, measure him or her. Uh, and then often a treatment is given, some kind of treatment is selected, and you intervene on particular nodes or sometimes even on, uh, um, on connections. Um, and you wanted to then to monitor what the effects are on, on what other uh, nodes uh, of relevance does this affect. Uh, and we often di consider different settings. So <clears throat> A treatment is given, uh, a particular variation of it is given, and how do all these uh, treatments together uh, provide us information on the relations between these uh, variables for obsessive compulsive disorder. And what we've been using is invariant causal prediction. Um, and basically the idea is, uh, is seen here on the right, uh, where we have a particular intervention and we're interested in, for instance, in interference. So is <clears throat> interference of compulsions, does it interfere with your regular life? How is that uh, caused by control? Um, and you might think that there is a, a, a particular relation and we'd want to investigate that. And what invariant causal prediction for, uh, does for us is consider the situation where we've observed it and we could find the correlation, which of course does not imply any causal relation, but because we also have a measurement of uh, the time spent on particular compulsions, we could condition on this. <clears throat> and that's one way uh, where if we see that uh, both in the observational setting and in the treatment setting, the intervention setting, 
we would find that the time spent controls for uh, the relation with interference. So we find no connection or causal relation between control and interference. Then we'd have uh, evidence for invariance, and we would say, yes, there, there might be a, a causal relation there. And that's the, the method uh, uh, that we've been uh, using uh, thus far. And that's it. Thank you so much, Lawrence. So we moved on to something more technical, but uh, equally inspiring. 